Hey everyone, it's Travis Michael. I'm on the job site today working on this train unit behind me. It's got a faulty metering device. I'm going to go over how I made that diagnosis. I'm going to show you some things that it's doing that led me to that diagnosis. And I'm going to give you some tips on what to avoid doing. Because I know some people might start out a refrigerant thinking it's low, but it's not. And they create more work for themselves. So just stay tuned and I'm going to show you everything I found. So I attached my low side gauge to the suction line and I got my high side connected to the liquid line here. I also put my temperature probes on it so I can read the uh, superheat and subcooling. That will help me with my diagnosis here. One thing I noticed right away is the standing pressure seems pretty good. It's a 410A system and it's probably about, about 70 degrees. Uh, the standing pressure looks good. It doesn't appear to be low just off the bat, but that doesn't always hold true. You know, you definitely have to run it to make uh, your official diagnosis. I pulled the blower door off so we can have access to the expansion valve. It's a TXV. Um, I'm going to jump it out and see what happens when it runs. Now this isn't actually a very easy diagnosis on this system. I'm going to show you what happens. So I'm going to jump out the fan and the cooling. what the expansion valve looks like. You can already see it frosting up in a matter of seconds. my superheat is 64 degrees which means I'm underfeeding means the valves not getting enough refrigerant into the evaporator coil this expansion valve does not have a power head so in this case we're gonna have to replace the whole valve it could just be the inlet screen that's plugged up with some of uh, grime or something that's in the system. I'm going to pull my jumpers off and watch what happens. The you know, suction pressure goes right back up. The system equalizes out. If this was low on refrigerant, I said my liquid line pressure would be lower and my line all the way back to my compressor would be frosting up or, or colder depending on how low it was. But since, since this has no frost, it's really not even cold. I got extremely high superheat. I know that the evaporator coil is not getting the refrigerant it needs to effectively cool. I'm going to show you couple things with this metering device real quick. So this is our thermostatic expansion valve. So this is the cap tube that goes to the bulb. It's always a good idea to just make sure that the, the bulb is making good contact to the suction line, which in this case it is. You know, because if, if it fell off of the line that would cause you problems with your system running. This is very obvious that there's a restriction in this valve the way it's icing up immediately. Uh, if if you had a slower response, it could be something with the bulb, but like I said, this head isn't reserviceable, so we gotta replace this whole valve. Or even if it is just uh, the inlet screen that's plugged up, it just change out the valve. So the way this works is this sensing bulb senses the temperature of the suction line going back to the compressor. And this is actually the opening force. When this warms up, the charge inside this bulb warms up it opens the valve up, trying to feed more refrigerant into the into the evaporator coil. Now here's the external equalizer. That's the closing pressure. That, that's the closing force. The pressure creates a, a, a force to close the valve. So it's fairly simple the way these work. And uh, like I said, this one's very obvious that this has got an issue with it. Um, I've seen it before where 
you have uh, maybe a restriction in the filter dryer and it would be doing the same thing if this was the point of the restriction you'd have ice building up on it and frost going back after it pretty much anytime you have a restriction that's what you're going to experience uh, you know you're going to experience the frost and the, uh, the, the cold line on one side warm on the other side so basically the proper repair here is we'll reclaim this system I'm going to change out this dryer I'm going to change out that valve and uh, we'll get them going luckily uh, train is pretty good they got uh, if you can see that it's hard to tell but they put part numbers on everything the train has uh, usually like X before uh, their series of numbers and that's the part number for what we need to get so I'm gonna give them a call find out pricing and availability on this so I've seen a bunch of times on different jobs where this tube either breaks off the bulb from the back here or rubs out being in a, you know, rub, hitting something, they rub out and loses its charge. If that happens, usually the valve slams shut and uh, basically the system would pump down. Your suction pressure would go down to almost nothing, you know, almost down to zero, depending on what system you're working on. And, uh, you know, if you just come on, just throw your low side gauge on, you're going to be, oh, well, it's low or it's flat. It, it needs a leak check. But definitely make sure you put both sides of your gauges on. Do your due diligence. Take some temperature readings. See what your superheat is. See what your subcooling is. And it gives you a lot more insight to what the system is doing. So I always recommend don't shortcut it. Don't make assumptions based off of one side of the system. Take observations. Take a look at the expansion valve. Make sure there's no frost and this way you can make the proper diagnosis and give a good quality job to your customer get them going keep them happy all right so thanks for watching the video if it was helpful like comment subscribe to my channel i'm going to be doing more videos on uh on diagnosing uh, air conditioning system problems and also how to repair them too so you know just keep uh, keep an eye out you don't want to miss a thing hit the no notification button and i'll see you on the next video thanks